Listen now, we the talk around town. Alex threw the ball to smoke before a touchdown. Huh? It's fourth down and you don't really want no more. We've been winning from the door. You should check the scoreboard. Huh? Check, check, check the scoreboard. Huh? Welcome back to the scoreboard podcast today is going to be the uh well the, i guess the final episode of the 2021 2022 season um we're not going to have a big break because the usfl is also coming back um which we're going to predict and uh, hopefully have a, a good time watching that but uh, it's the uh, last nfl week which is always unfortunate it's always sad to see go for half a year but this time at least we have uh uh, we have USFL football coming up in the spring, so that is something that we'll get into. But uh, Super Bowl weekend, obviously. Um, now, last week in the show, we predicted the NFL honors. And uh, we are actually recording this show just hours before the ceremony starts. So we don't know the results just yet. But uh, we're going to have a show next week. We're going to review them, see if anything egregious happened or if we generally tend to agree with the results. And uh, we'll review the Super Bowl as well and foreshadow. Maybe the USFL will have to look into the schedule there again. But uh, today is final prediction day. We only have one game. And um, you lined out last week already that um, you are ahead one point, which means I have to pick against you yes. to be able to, to tie the prediction. Now, here's um, a proposal I was going to make or I will make that might make it a little bit more interesting. And that relates to the following. I believe I should get... A half point added to my score and the reason I believe I should get a half point added to my score is because I predicted the AFC to win the Pro Bowl if you remember that correctly last week and I said we wouldn't count the Pro Bowl but here's but here's the thing here's the, the impressive part about why did I say I picked the AFC do you remember oh uh, not right offhand what was it I said because they have Justin Herbert ah okay I specifically stated that, and guess who won the offensive MVP for the Pro Bowl? Yeah. Uh, you know what's crazy? It would have been Kyler Murray if, if the NFC would have won, but yes. Yeah, maybe. But they didn't win. Did they yeah. win? No. Uh, so the AFC won? So how about this? I get half a point for picking specifically Justin Herbert to win it for the AFC as an MVP, and that way I still have a shot at winning the whole prediction as well. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I did. I'll no, you that. didn't get a shot. You didn't get a shot at picking the Pro Bowl, obviously. But yeah. um, I'm assuming that if you did, you would not have picked the same thing. Yeah, probably not. Just to be honest, you would not have given you. it to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mac Jones was at the Pro Bowl too. Yeah, huh. didn't play too well. Yeah, this is decent in the skill competition. Yeah. You know, he yeah. won uh, the the what was it the uh, thread the needle where he had the play against the defensive backs yeah, it did pretty well better than Kirk Cousins said that <laughs> yeah that's not saying a lot I mean Kirk Cousins is the the Andy Dalton line of today's time yeah, so maybe but you know that means Mac Jones is above the Andy Dalton line as a rookie uh, maybe maybe pretty good pretty good I, if I do say so Mac Jones is pretty good <laughs> anyway we have a game we have one more game coming up and this is of course the most important one um Super Bowl, whatever the number is, LVI, that is 50, 56, yeah. That is uh, that is what, we're, what we got. And we have the Rams and Bengals. So that is not one that necessarily a lot of people predicted before the season, especially not on the Bengals side. No. The Rams were kind of going into the NFC as favorites because they, they had everything invested into, you know, this is the year they have to go to the Super Bowl. Um, with the Matthew Stafford trade and the trades during the regular season, it was kind of it's it's this or, or bust this year. For the Bengals, not so much because they were the worst team in the league two years ago, and then Burrow got hurt in his rookie season. We had no idea what he was going to be, and yet here he is. So, um, what's your opinion on this on this setting? Well, uh, this is a tough game for for the Bengals here. I, you know, um, people like to say that. Um, the the Bengals came back in that game against the Chiefs. Yes, but that is a middling defense, and you're not going to see that against the, the the Rams. The Rams have a much better defense than the than the Chiefs. And let's not forget what was it nine sacks in one game here. Uh, there that Tennessee. offensive was that that was at Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that offensive line is horrible, and they are they were just giving up sacks left and right, and. <clears throat> I don't know. This is going to be a tough game, man. 
I, I think that Aaron Donald and Von Miller are going to get to Joe Burrow. I, and I, I hate saying it because I like the Bengals. And I kind of like Joe Burrow. I like what they're doing. They're a nice young team. This is the, the teacher versus the student once again with um, Zach and, and Sean McVay here. Um, I'm going to go with the Rams here. I think the Rams are going to beat this one. I think it could be a close game. I think probably a lot like the Chiefs. The Bengals get behind early in this game, and then they make an attempt once the defense gets tired. All the problem being that the defense is much better for the Rams than the defense for the Chiefs. And overall, they're probably not going to be able to make it back into this game. So I'm going with the Rams. So I'm, I'm trying to go to this kind of sort of by position group to really figure out which which team has its strength where. So quarterback, I'll probably give to Joe Burrow by a, by a slight edge. Um Wide receivers, this is tough because those are two incredibly, very, very talented units. Yeah. So it, it's going to probably depend a lot on Odell Beckham and the way that he's able to, to work himself into the game because if he if he does not show up, then Cooper Cup's pretty much by himself and he'll get doubled all day. Um, for the Bengals, I, I kind of like the Bengals more because they have more versatility in the, in the passing game. Uh, all their receivers are kind of that sort of Randy Moss body type to, to some degree. Uh, that they can just they can just throw deep balls to them, and it's got to be hard to cover when they're running three verticals all day. Um, the key that you mentioned, I think, is the offensive line, and that was the key against Kansas City because against Kansas City, they played really well. In fact, I think if I remember correctly, the Bengals had more defensive sacks than the, the Chiefs did in that game, and that's what it's going to take. If the offensive line can protect Joe Burrow, you can't take nine sacks uh, mm-hmm. against this defense. Absolutely impossible. If you can take two, maybe the whole game, then it's a diff- then it's a very different story. I think offensively, I like the Bengals better. I think they have more offensive firepower, and if it becomes a shootout, I think they should be the favorite team. Um, it's gonna depend on if it becomes a shootout. You have to pass a lot now. The the Rams pass rush is really good. Can you protect your ball? That's that's kind of the key. And defensively. Um, I think the Bengals' main strength is in their second level. They have pretty good, pretty good linebacking core. Of course, decent pass rush on both sides. But um, I think the advantage in the trenches goes to the Rams, only if it's only a slight, slight advantage. And then the defensive backfield is probably the concern. Um, specifically, if you have you, you know, you have Eli Apple on the field for the Bengals, and he's gonna go against Cooper Cup or Odell Beckham every single snap, and that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a super important matchup because you cannot constantly shift safeties to for example Odell Beckham side where you got Cooper Cup on the other side of the field um, because you have a matchup problem now he's been holding up they've done they've done well to contain the Chiefs and that's probably the most dangerous passing offense that you could have asked to face in a championship game and they've, they've managed to do it so um, it's to me this is a really close one now the Rams are four point favorites and I kind of get why they're just the, the sort of the super team and the Bengals were not supposed to be here. No one ex- expected them to be there. If it was, I think, the Chiefs and the the Rams, it would be very close. It would, it might be a pick 'em game. It might be a complete toss up. Now, I mentioned the interesting fact. Uh, I mentioned the interesting fact last week, I believe, that this is technically a home game for the Bengals, um, which means that they are going to be playing in their home uniforms, and they're also going to be using. The home team's locker rooms, which is obviously the Rams at the Rams Stadium. Mm-hmm. So the Rams are going to use the the visiting locker rooms at their own house, which is kind of stupid bureaucracy. That's how the NFL operates. I don't think it's going to be a big advantage for either team necessarily, but playing at home or at least not having to travel, kind of being used to the uh, the stadium environment, may be slightly helpful for the uh, for the Rams as well. That all that being said, for my predictions, I have to pick the Bengals, obviously. For several reasons. One, I have to disagree with you, and you're probably going to pick the Rams. Smart choice, because they're favored. Um, so I'll take the Bengals. And also, I like the Bengals better than the Rams. I want them of to course. win, obviously. Uh, Joe Burrow. Yeah, I like Joe Burrow. I know um, a lot of opinions are sort of split on him, on whether we're counting him into that, into that tier already of the top young quarterbacks. They're with Allen and Mahomes and Justin Herbert. I think we do. I think after this season, we probably should. Because he's beaten teams that he really was not supposed to. So I think even though he's not on the same level of maybe just raw physical talent as a Josh Allen, 
Um, in terms of just the, the, the way he plays quarterback, he's I think he's up there, and he's more that um, more statuesque. I don't want to say that because he can move a little bit, but more of a pocket passer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning sort of player. A lot of people call him uh, Joe Cool. I think if he wins the Super Bowl, he I will actually give him that. I think he deserves the nickname if he, if he manages to pull it off. Um, so I I'm gonna trust Joe Burrow. I'm gonna have faith in Joe Burrow being the better quarterback, even though it's his first full season as a starter. Um, he has the same amount of playoff experience as Matthew Stafford. That's mm-hmm. the bottom line, and I think he's a better quarterback. So um, when it comes down to having to make the clutch play. I think uh, I think he'll have an extra hand up. Matthew Stafford throws more interceptions. Uh, he seems a little bit looser with the football sometimes, a little bit more reckless. Um, and I think Joe Burrow has the type of receivers more so than than um, Matthew Stafford has for the the deep balls, kind of the the, the shot taking um, sort of passes. So I'm gonna get it to the Bengals. I'll say the offense gets it done. They score 31 points. Matthew Stafford throws one too many interceptions. And uh, Bengals win it somehow, which mm. th- no one would have expected. I wonder what the lines were for the Bengals at the start of the season if you told them they go to the Super Bowl oh, or they're going to win it. You would have cashed in something serious. And not, not even just win it to get it. I'm sure it was, Jesus, well, probably a thousand one odds or something ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, no one expected this, really. It, coming off into Joe Burrow's second season off of an injury like that, there's no way they were on anyone's mind outside of Cincinnati to get this far into the playoffs and uh, to win it. Like, yeah, no, that that would be infinite odds. <laughs> but here they are, here they are, and uh, they have a good shot. Like, this is a. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's a tougher team. Like, okay, if they would have had to face Tampa Bay in the Super Bowl, I think that's a tougher team for uh, a young team like the Bengals to play because Tom Brady's going to do the mind games and, you know, figure out a way to run over them in the fourth quarter. But this is a... He'll not give them the mistakes. Yeah, exactly. He he won't make the mistakes that Matthew Stafford can do. Yeah. He's not going to light them up the way Stafford potentially could or an Aaron Rodgers could, but he would not be the one to... Um, blunder the game away with some terrible interceptions. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's what you get when you got a gunslinger for a quarterback who he can be phenomenal, but you know, as we saw with Brett Favre and guys like that, he can't throw a lot of interceptions. So, yeah. yep, that's definitely in the cards here. And that's what it's going to come down to is uh, Matt Stafford versus the O line of the Bengals. How many how many uh, sacks are they going to give up? How many times are they going to let the Rams get to the quarterback? And that's going to be where this game lies in. Uh, uh, Matt Stafford trying to play flawless versus the Bengals offensive line trying to play flawless and one of them is going to give it up I'm, I'm sure so that, that'll be the winner but I'm sticking with the Rams I, I think the Rams have a better shot than that, that's fair I think they have a defensive advantage It's it has to be um, a Matthew Stafford game though there's there's absolutely no doubt this, this cannot be the kind of game that he had against Arizona where he throws the ball 15 times um, he, he's gonna have to he's gonna have to make it happen by himself and win the game is he capable of doing it yeah probably he's Hall of Fame talent just doesn't have the Hall of Fame accomplishments uh, with it, only this season he's had some postseason success, and mostly apparently thanks to the, the Lions never being good enough to, to do it with. Um, but uh, I like you, you interesting you mentioned Brady because I think Burrow is more that type of quarterback, and that has translated into success if you look at players like Brady or like uh, like Peyton Manning, more so than necessarily players like. Uh, like Brett Favre, like Aaron Rodgers, who are on paper better quarterbacks. They have, they are more talented players, but um, teams tend to get complacent with this kind of quarterback. And we've seen it. The Packers are, of course, a prime example for it. Um, but if you have someone who's going to make heroic Superman plays to anyone on any given week, you're probably not. You're probably getting complacent with building the roster, and then it comes back to bite you in the playoffs. Now, Joe Burrow is a similar player to Brady in the regard that you put a, a good team around him, give him the support he needs. He's not going to lose at the game. He makes very few mistakes, um, or very few bad plays. He's not going to squander it away. So, if that offense and it's a it's a loaded offense, you think Jamar Chase? Um, 
T. Higgins, and then also Joe Mixon, who's going to be key and was, I think, a top 10 running back. Mm-hmm. The, the Bengals can get out to a lead, get Joe Mixon involved in the running and in the passing game. I think Joe, Joe Burrow has, has just... He's just slightly ahead of, of Matthew Stafford. And the, the offense he's working with also is... Um, didn't see it coming at all before the season, but we have to... We have to look at it as it is now and not view the Bengals as this like unproven sort of developing team anymore. I think they're for real right now. And they've kind of started peaking at the most important time, which was the playoffs. So you can beat the Chiefs. I think you can beat anyone in that kind of setting where it's all chips in the middle. It's a, it's a shootout. If you can beat Kansas City, you can beat anyone. How, so how do you see that's, as, as far as uh, the coaching aspect, though? These head coaches uh, know each other very well. And you know this is another student versus teacher matchup here. So you would think McVay should have the advantage there, right? He has the advantage uh, as far as he's been there before, and he has he has the extra playoff experience. Absolutely, he's been a head coach for longer. He's been he's been in the Super Bowl before, and he's coached in those spots. Um, so that is a slight advantage. However, it's not anywhere near the advantage that Andy Reid had over Zach Taylor, and that didn't work out. True, they still beat they still beat him. Um, so I think it's it's gonna not play that big a part because Zach Taylor is doing a phenomenal job. Once he started, you know, kind of halfway through the season, really trusting Joe Burrow's arm, that team went off and their stock went up. So to me, coaching pretty even to head coaches that are not necessarily super proven yet with um for how short a duration they have been in the league relative to to their age um not not a, not that big an advantage to me i think this is a pretty even match i think we got to consider zach taylor in that that same echelon at, at this point with the shanahan and the, the mcveigh oh if he wins definitely i think i mentioned that earlier in the season as a matter of fact that if these guys keep winning his name's going to be in that group as it should, as it should be, absolutely. Because right now he's done. He's, you know, he hasn't coached for as long, but in terms of playoff success, he's up there, right? Just mm-hmm. with with the, with the other guys as well. Um, so I, I like Zach Taylor. I think I think I like um, what they've been doing. Not not that big a difference to me. I think it'll really it'll really come down to quarterback play. And with that, I'm gonna go with the young kid now over the veteran. Go with Joe Burrow. He's been doing better. Like I also went with Mahomes over Tom Brady last year, but <laughs> that didn't oh, that didn't work out yeah. too well. But that was not Mahomes' fault either. He played he played a maniac in that game. He was the only good chief on the field. Oh, yeah. I doubt that that is going to happen to Joe Burrow. I think he has the support that he needs from his offense. So I, I'm taking Bengals. Bengals all the way. Mm-hmm. And this is also for the Bengals. This is the first Super Bowl they're in for... Decades, I don't know, 1988 or something, yeah. Yeah, something like that. It's yeah. been forever. Like, ha- <laughs> over half the fan base has never witnessed their team have this kind of success. So it's it's certainly new. It's 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 new. Um, even just recently, it's just it's never been anything like that. And we don't get those stories too much of a team that's historically not very good or has been for a long time to really make the jump. And that's something that's, you know, up to the future. We'll see if that's going to remain the case. We saw, for example, with Tampa Bay, they were not very good for a long time. They jumped up, built that super team. Um, we're good now for two seasons, had success. Whether that's going to stay, we'll see. Same with uh, with Cincinnati. So that that's more of a, a future outlook, though, for this this year. They I think they've earned where they are. And uh, I think they'll win it. I'll take it. Mm-hmm. And they better win too. I'm just glad um, it's a new matchup, like something we haven't yeah, seen. Yeah, it's not New England and um, yeah, Tampa Bay or something. Tampa Bay. Yeah. Well, Tampa was only one time. Tampa was that. Yeah, that's much. true. But it was Tom Brady, so the kind of still New England. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or or it was like, what if we got the the Cowboys versus the Patriots or something like that? Like nobody wants. Oh, so that would that. be that would be a novelty because the Cowboys don't go don't go anywhere in playoffs these days. <laughs> well, these days, but how many yeah. times have they been to the Super Bowl in the past? Well, yeah, they've they've been they've been there a bunch. That is that's certainly true. Mm-hmm. But the older the league gets, the more teams have been to, to, to multiple Super true. Bowls. Right? True. There's not a lot of Cowboys fans who remember last time they went. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Hope it stays that way. 
Yeah, it'd be more of Seattle or somebody these days. Uh, what, what, what's an NFC team that's been to multiple in the past 20 years? Um, uh, well, San Francisco has been to two. Hmm. The Rams now have been to two. Yeah, yeah. The NFC have been, has been more diverse than they the have, NFC, for yeah. sure. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah. You, you had Panthers and Falcons. and They were all thrown in there like one time. Yeah, Eagles yeah. and Rams. Yeah. Saints, Saints maybe. But yeah. yeah, it's, it's been yeah. more diverse. Because you had those big dynasties, right? The, the Brady and, and Manning and the AFC. And then Big Ben oh, yeah. as well with the Steelers. That was just Eli to a degree. Um, mm-hmm. Occupied all, all, all of it. Yeah. Um, I mentioned though, uh, I don't think I actually quoted this fact, but this is the first uh, Super Bowl I believe since 2008 or something or 2010 that um, or the last 12 Super Bowls before this one featured either Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, uh, Aaron Rodgers, or the 49ers. Oh, I think wow. that's what it was. Wow. It was and then, and then Joe Staley tweeted out that they should replace the 49ers with Joe Staley because he was in both of them. So that is technically the truth. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the dominant, dominance of the AFC. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to think. Like, uh, There was another weird stat like that also. Um, it, it involved Tom Brady and um, something, someone else. Uh, I can't remember. Or, or maybe it was... Um, the first Super Bowl that didn't have uh, Belichick and Andy Reid, or and or Andy Reid. Uh, I can't remember. It's right probably been up in a while as well since that happened. Since that last happened, huh? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I know it involved the Patriots, but so uh, probably Bill Belichick, but I can't remember what it was right offhand. They've they've been to a lot. They've yeah. Been to a lot. And you know what? I think they'll be back sooner than we would like. <laughs> well, you would like. I don't have a personal grudge against the Patriots at all. In fact, I like I like Mac Jones. But yeah, uh, until yeah. you face them in the Super Bowl one year. Well, yeah, sure, but you know, in that case, yeah, whatever. He's yeah, I like him. I'll I don't know. <laughs> he's a good player. People people hate him. He's on the people always underrate him because he's not he's not a Josh Allen. He's not the you know the athletic dual threat quarterback. People wanna discredit him for like being completely worthless like people there i know a lot of people did not even have a first round grade on him people said he was second round talent yeah well we expected scott coker or something like that you know we saw alabama win a national championship with him and where is he now you know uh aj mccarran <laughs> yeah. something so, like that. so irrelevant that we all forgot that his name is actually jake and jake scott. yeah well there you yeah. go <laughs> i think scott that's but i remember yeah that might be the the guy that uh, runs Bellator, as a matter of fact, Coker. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Jake Coker. <laughs> yep. Hey, ne- hey. Never sniffed NFL air. Yeah, AJ McCarron, which he has played in a few NFL games, but has done absolutely nothing. You know. Yeah. And by the way, in this Super Bowl, I think the key, or one of the key players in terms of storyline, is definitely Andrew Whit- Whitworth, right? He's like, what, 40 years old now? Mm-hmm. Played most of his career with the Bengals, now with the Rams. Yeah. This may very well be his last game. That's kind of ironic, too, that they're facing the Bengals. Yeah. That's it. It's, uh, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. But we'll um, we'll see. We'll see. I got Bengals, you got Rams. And uh, we already brought up some coaches, so uh, we, we might as well talk about some head coaching changes because there's been a lot of a lot of ruckus going on in the nfl with uh, with coaching hires so um do you want to just go through all of them and give a quick opinion on it yeah, yeah let's do the that. ones that we have so far starting it's, it's to start off with your favorite to, to saints. nag about the chicago bears uh, no not the saints the bears <laughs> okay. because you always complain about Mad Nag is so, so much. Yeah. Now, how about Matt Eberflus? What do you what do you think about this hire? I don't know that it's going to get any better. I mean, yeah, the Colts had a great defense under him. I mean, I mean, it, well, it wasn't top tier. It wasn't you know number one in the NFL. They were good. They had a lot of good players there. I don't think Eberflus going to Chicago is just going to change the culture. You know, like they say, every new coach that comes in, we're going to change the culture and probably 75 percent of the time that doesn't happen you know the team is pretty much the same as it was before i i I guess the jury is out and he could do something he could be the next wonder boy or something i don't know but i just can't see it just changing for 
for Chicago with this hire. Like, if it was Eric Bieniemy, I would be extremely happy for Justin Fields. But it's Matt Eberflus, and, and not many people are going for the defensive-minded head coaches these days. So it was kind of odd in that situation too. But yeah, but it is what it is. Um, hopefully he can do something for for Justin Fields' sake and and the other uh, Roquan Smith and the other Georgia Bulldogs that are on Chicago. But I, I don't know. I'm not extremely hopeful for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this either. Here's what what I probably have most most trouble with is this was one of the first hires we had. Like this happened pretty much instantly, which kind of tells you that like they had the entire pool of available candidates to yeah. pick from, and they picked many rules. There were a lot more promising names out there, and I, it feels like they just kind of they just kind of went for the first guy that showed up. Probably, of course, not the case. But they decided that this was the the right right candidate. So um, I do agree. I would have preferred to see an offensive head coach be uh, be promoted because um, there's a, a lot of young young offensive minds in the league, and a lot of these are getting head coaching jobs. Who we're going to talk about in in the following parts um, for the sake of Justin Fields because that division. Presuming Aaron Rodgers will be gone is wide open, and the Bears are in prime position to take it. Um, not maybe not the most opportunistic hires, so I'm not a not a huge fan of that. How about the Broncos and Nathaniel Hackett? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I guess they're they're pulling from uh, the Packers, and he probably wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible, knowing that Aaron Rodgers is most likely out the door, also. And so is Devontae Adams. So might as well, while you're as far as you'll ever be with the, the Packers, is as it looks right now, they, you know, get out of there. And I, I still don't see anything great here with the Broncos, um, but maybe that's their connection to Aaron Rodgers. And maybe this is an Aaron Rodgers move that he wants Nathaniel Hackett in there. Maybe, you know, there, there may be some uh, connection that they had there. So. I think that's probably what this is, is the Broncos are just hoping that seals the deal with Aaron Rodgers. So I, I think, in generally, this is a name that definitely should have an opportunity at a head coaching job, regardless of uh, where he's, he's coming from and the quarterback. Um, he probably deserved a shot maybe this year. I mean, there's a lot of, I think, even more proven coordinators available, but um, it, it's, you know, it's not... not um, insane by any means i think it's a decent plan i i can't shake the feeling that this entire thing is about aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. though this is like okay listen like we need aaron Rodgers this offseason our coach we're not going to make the quarterback dependent on what what coach we find we're going to make we do whatever we can to get aaron Rodgers because it Aaron Rodgers, I mean, you're in the toughest division in, in the AFC with Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert. Um, it's tough to break through, but you add Aaron Rodgers to the team they already have. They're an instant contender, and they're going to make the playoffs and make uh, make some noise because this Broncos roster, even though it's not at its best compared to maybe the 2015 when Peyton Manning was there, it's still a better roster than Aaron Rodgers has ever played on in Green Bay by quite a bit. So... Um, I think bringing Nathaniel Hackett is definitely a ploy for Aaron Rodgers, and I won't be told it's a, it's otherwise. I think this is going to be the first team that's going to be in the running to try and make it happen somehow. Um, Hackett's going to have um, he's going to have the communication lines open uh, with Matt Lafleur. What do you want? I, they probably talked about this even before he took the job. I'm not, I wouldn't mm -hmm. be too surprised, and I know Aaron Rodgers would probably prefer to leave. Um, question is, will the, the Packers force him to stay because he does have another year? Um, can they afford to, to force him to stay? We'll see how that turns out. But this is, yeah, this is higher is completely dependent on what happens with Aaron Rodgers. Is he going to show up or not? If not, then uh, rebuild time. If he does, it's if he does, it's instantly a great coaching hire. Because if he does, because of this. All right, Houston Texans hire uh, or promote defensive <laughs> coordinator uh, Lovey Smith. <laughs> this is an interesting name right here. Uh, if if anyone knows college or NFL, this guy's name has fluttered around for many years, many many years. Uh, Lovey Smith, uh, I guess most notable uh, the time he spent with uh, Chicago, um, eight years I think it was there as head coach and. Wasn't extremely successful. I mean, he had a few good seasons. That's why he hung around for so long. But, um, yeah, then, uh, what was it? Tampa Bay, I think it was, in 2015. 
before he got kicked, I mean, he basically was out of the league after that, after that horrible season. And he went to Illinois. Had a uh, somewhat mediocre run at Illinois, and um, that eventually came to an end, and here he is back with t uh, Texas, back in the NFL. And now he's head coach again, which is interesting. I would love, I want to see what he's going to do. I don't have a lot of faith in it, but he is one of those uh, older guys like a, a Bruce Arians, like a Andy Reid that could come in here and actually institute some old school values and make a great team out of the Texans. Now, he doesn't have a lot to work with, and I don't know that he's getting Deshaun Watson back anytime soon, so uh, it's going to be a tough road to hoe. But it is an interesting name and an interesting hire. Yeah, see, it's interesting is the correct word. I don't really... I'm not really getting along with this one very well. I have some some kind of dire ideas about this, actually. But first of all, this team's not in a very good spot at all. Presum Deshaun Watson's not there. This is not the kind of team where uh, you just promote the next guy up and you steady <laughs> ship, right? Now nah, this is total rebuild. This is like you need to bring some fresh air into the building. And I wanted to... I, that, like the other co candidate um, they were considering as finalists was Josh McCown. Completely unproven, retired quarterback, but I think that's the kind of risk you have to actually take given the situation that you're in. If you're Denver, I understand the play. Um, or you're some team that's more established, like New Orleans maybe, but I get it. But this team's deep down in the dumps, and just promoting just promoting the defensive coordinator when David Colley didn't even do that badly, but the roster is completely devoid of talent. You have a young quarterback who desperately needs development and you just bring up the old old nose defensive coordinator um i don't like it i would prefer much prefer someone like someone like josh mccown take the risk i i not to be too pessimistic here but i kind of have a, i kind of got a vibe from this one of uh the whole brian flores story came out and the the allegations floating mm -hmm. floating around and the texans were just like no mm -mm, not us look look we got him nope yeah. not us I was so, worried about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not too optimistic about the state of the franchise at at this moment. I don't know. I mean, he deserves a spot. I like him as a coach. Um, I think he's done great work. I think he does deserve another shot. I think he would have fit better into a team that's further along that process. Maybe even Chicago. Uh, I'm, I might have liked him better there, but. Um, for this, it just kind of feels like a, a whole lot of doing nothing. And if the offseason shapes out similarly, I don't see this team making much progress into next year. So, not not really a big fan. The Jaguars, bringing back an old name that we've heard before. Ah. Doug Peterson. Yeah, after winning a Super Bowl and then having a horrible season or two, getting basically told to leave, sitting out a season, and now he is the head coach of a dumpster fire down there in Jacksonville has a decent I would say could be a really good quarterback to work with there in Trevor Lawrence but the rest of the team there's not much to speak of there it's it's a lot like Lovey Smith in my uh, opinion because there's not a team to work with here to, to come in and change now hopefully he drafts well hopefully he makes some moves and, um, and signing some free agents um but Doug Peterson, he's a proven winner. He's proven that he can win. But he's also proven he can have really horrible seasons at that. With the exact same team that he was winning with somehow. But, um, yeah, that's that's another interesting hire. I, I think it could work out. I, I give this one like a 50-50 chance, you know. It could work out and it could go horribly wrong. Um, because there's not, that he doesn't have the personnel to work with. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're set. If you're the Jaguars, you have all your chips uh, on Trevor Lawrence as the future. So this mm -hmm. is going to be it. Can you develop it or not? It's a similar situation, as we talked about with Lovey Smith, that I probably, given the situation the team is in, would have liked a bit more of a sort of risky approach, maybe revolutionary hire. And they were in a similar spot as well because they had Byron Leftwich as their other um, prime candidate, who seemed to be, you know, the... the incredible favorite until suddenly he didn't he, he just withdrew himself from the conversation and they were kind of forced to settle for the next best thing and doc peterson is the more the safer approach you know he's the um the less exciting option for sure but he does bring some amount of safety 
Um, maybe for the Jaguars it's more justifiable because you have more pieces in place than Houston does. But I still would have liked to see Byron Leftwich a lot more working with Trevor Lawrence than I do Doug Peterson. But I think it's not, it's not a bad hire. It's not as bad as Lovie Smith. But um, if it's going to be enough to get this team, this Trevor Lawrence, Doug Peterson, the rest of the squad uh, over the hump, uh, I'm kind of holding out doubt. But uh, we know the potential Trevor Lawrence has. So if, if, um, you know, if they get it done, then it's uh, it's going to end up being a, a pretty good hire. And they can only really improve from from last year. So um, we'll give it a shot. I don't, I don't hate it. Mm-hmm. The Raiders bring in Josh McDaniels. I think this guy may be one of the best out of all the new hires to, to win immediately coming in. Now, I know that there was a horrible run for Josh McDaniels in, what was it, Illinois, uh, before he went back to the Patriots and stayed there. But people have been trying to hire him away from the Patriots ever since because we know what that offense has been in the past. I mean, God, we just talked about how many Super Bowls that he has been to with the Patriots. Um I, I, we saw that the team could win even with a backup coach, <laughs> you know, just uh, a guy that's not even there anymore. It, I mean, the team winning like that with a guy that they didn't even want as their coach tells me that this team is set up to win if you have the right coach in there. Now, they're feeling that Josh McDaniels is the right coach. I'd say he's probably got a good 70% chance at actually winning immediately with this team. Yeah, it's it's an it's an interesting one because this is probably the best team hiring a new head coach this offseason. Um and Josh McDaniels is certainly the flashy pick, right? He's definitely the you know, take big risks. Maybe they're kind of starting to become aware. We have a lot of competition in our division. Maybe Aaron Rodgers is joining, we need to, you know, we need to be on our A game and we need to take some risks. Um we don't really know what he's going to be capable of doing by himself because t- traditionally the Bill Belichick coaching tree has not been the most prosperous uh, outside of Bill Belichick mm-hmm. himself because, well, it's just a, a lot of the success that's attributed to, to to Belichick and people who work under him are generally replaceable and are generally um, slotted in and they'll, they'll be successful in that system. But uh, what is he going to be able to do? Matt Patricia didn't work out uh, at all. Joe Judge, yeah, right. We'll see, but I I don't love the idea. I think they could have had um, they could have had maybe a bit more proven of, of a play caller like uh, Eric Bieniemy. You mentioned him. I would have preferred him over Josh McDaniels. Then again, maybe he's not the right fit for um, like a, a town like Las Vegas. I think Josh McDaniels certainly. Um, I mean, I didn't like the John Gruden hire necessarily in the sense that I didn't think it was a very smart move. Uh, it turned out better than I thought with success wise, but. Uh, this is kind of a similar spot, right? They, mm-hmm. um, they like to they like to be flashy, which fits with the city. But is it going to be successful? I don't know. I don't really care either. I don't like the team. They might as well be bad forever. I don't I don't mind at all. But I'm gonna be very entertained watching it happen. Hey, I want to uh, clarify too. I, I said the Colts earlier. It was actually Denver where he had his head coaching run, and it ended up. A horrible. I, I think that might have been the the Tebow years, as a matter of fact. The the Colts. The Colts. He was um he was supposed to take the job and then yes, that's what it was. Then yes, he yes. retired like instantly. Yeah, he and went back. Really the job went back. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Belichick made another phone call. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's the how Anthony they ended up with Frank game. Wright. Yeah. Yeah. So. The Miami Dolphins hired Mike McDaniel. What do you think? <laughs> a lot of McDaniels getting hired around mm-hmm. here. <laughs> Without the S this time. Uh, I think this is uh, another um, part of that trend that we had been seeing. I thought it might have been dying out. But now that these two teams are successful again, it's happening again. Whereas you have Shanahan and McVay. And if you want success like those two teams have had, you hire guys around them. And... Uh, it's, it's getting to be so many times now that I can't even remember who all has been hired from those coaching trees. Uh, but here's another one. They're going to take that chance. Uh, the Giants are a really bad team. I, I think they have a decent quarterback to work with if he, he is. Um, I'm sorry, the Dolphins. Um, um, Tua is a really decent quarterback, and he has a, a, a platform to build with. Um 
Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, how how often has that worked out though? Picking from the the McVay and um, and Shanahan coaching trees. I mean, uh, Zach Taylor worked. It, yeah, I mean, that's what they're hoping for. They're hoping for that kind of success. He has a good team to start with. Unlike the Giants, would have been a bad team to start with. But the Dolphins actually is set up to win if you have the right things. And I know the whole Florida situation was crazy. And uh, hopefully that stink doesn't fall on him. I mean, the, with the uh, lawsuit and all of that. So who knows how that's going to turn out. But I, I don't know. I, I'd say it's uh, above a mediocre hire if he can have the success that the other guys have had that have left that system. Man, maybe it'll work out here. Best hire by far. I love this one. This is great. <laughs> now, at the risk of, of course, being an absolute homer i think i said this like a month ago i think i said mike mcdaniel is the most underrated person in the nfl he's supposed to get a head coaching job i think he is one of the best brightest football minds that come out of this coaching i think he's a better than matt lafleur at this moment already i think mike mcdaniel is going to do fantastic he's going to work with tua who's wildly talented when uh, the dolphins fired brian flores we're all scratching our heads we're thinking that you only do this if you have something big planned, like something really big, because Brian Flores wasn't that bad. He turned them around, he built them up it would, over the course of two years. They became, from, they went from a terrible team, top five pick, to a, an above average, slightly above average team at their best with a lot of potential, especially on offense. I think they are going to explode on offense. If the, if the, the cogs start turning, Everything starts working out. This is going to be great. He's going to be calling the plays. He's going to be an offensive play caller. Um, and he's going to be phenomenal at that from day one. Love the hire. It was on nobody's radar, by the way. And I said the only person I would, you know, justify just cold firing uh, Brian Flores with, if you know, if you know, you had Jim Harbaugh lined up. And at that point, no one was even thinking about Mike McDaniel for this hiring cycle. And they made it happen out of thin air. It's, it's bad that the Liners lost him. Because he was one of the most important members of that organization, bar none, I think, just in terms of preparation and being assistant to Kyle Shanahan. Um, and I think Mike McDaniel has a, had a significant part in writing uh, the playbook and uh, and creating the offense as well. So he will be more than prepared. I think he's fan favored already, as he should be. I love the guy. He's great. Um, Dolphins are looking up. To me, this is the best hire by far, this is the exact right person at the exact right place. Exactly what Tua needs. Jalen Wadley have that promising offense in um, in a city that hasn't had success for a long time. This is a perfect hire. And I know this sounds homery because obviously it comes from the Niners, and I've I know him better than all the other coaches that have been hired. Um, I think you need no more than listen to three minutes of him coaching talking about football discussing offense to understand why this is such a great hire and i'm happy for the dolphins i think they're 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 optimistic which is which is good um i think they're going to be good i i'm inclined to bet you right now that the dolphins make the playoffs next year i'm not going to do it just yet because the division may potentially be strong but mm -hmm. at this come start of the season i may i may pick him to just flat up make the playoffs wow. because you got I, yeah, a lot of confidence in him, man. I do. I, I really do. I think he's uh, he might be the uh, the best product of that coaching tree yet. Wow. To me, in terms of just just mental race. I think he's he's a better football mind than Matt Lafleur. Absolutely. I think he's better than Mike Lafleur. Yeah, he's good. He's wow. he's really really good. I think he's more ready to be a head coach than all of them. Matt Lafleur, of course, walked into a gold mine having Aaron Rodgers on his team. Yeah. What he actually is, we will see when that is gone. But uh, I think Mike McDaniel is probably the best offensive assistant uh, in the NFL for a while. So, great hire. Love it. Mm -hmm. Very excited to watch. We have the, um, well, the Vikings and the Saints, who kind of are still, mm, kind of still not fully set. The Saints uh, seem to be hiring Dennis Allen, which is also just um, a panic move, in my opinion. What do you think about this? Yeah, pretty much. They're just bringing him up from inside the ranks. I don't even think they looked for a coach to tell you the truth. <laughs> I mean, they're just like, ah, whatever we got. They they know that the team is headed uh, in a downward spiral without Peyton there. So, 
I think that's all it is. This this may just be a band aid until they they find a better hire, because at that at this point, if they're not promoting him, then there it seems that all the good coaches are, are taken. I don't I don't guess Eric B Enemy's ever getting hired anywhere. Brian Flores is in a uh, lawsuit right now, so who's gonna pick up uh, Flores at this point? So um, yeah uh. I, this is all really you know all they could do i guess and until a better name becomes available yeah i mean they, i feel like they're kind of throwing dennis allen to the sharks here completely this team if you ask me right now for to pick one team to have the steepest drop off from this year to next year i'd say the saints i'd mm -hmm. say the saints put, could deliver a legitimate bottom five performance next year uh, with everything that's going Breeze retires. Michael Thomas is apparently never going to be healthy again. Sean Payton steps away. Now Alvin Kamara might go to jail. Like, you have nothing left. Yeah. And now and now you promote this guy to the head coaching job where he, you don't even know what's up with Jameis Winston. Um, do you even have a quarterback? Um, it's not looking good. This is probably the bleakest outlook out of all teams that we've discussed so far even worse may, maybe even worse than houston or on the same level as houston mm -hmm. um not a fan at all the vikings position still open they've interviewed jim harbaugh so he's kind of in that conversation then um but it seems that kevin o'connell is sort of the um the guy that they are leaning yes. to right now yeah well i i i think this is the the same thing that the the uh, Dolphins did, you know, they they want that coaching tree. It, it is crazy that those two guys are like the forefront of young coaches in the NFL, and that's what every team wants that doesn't have an Andy Reid or a Bruce Arians or or a Belichick, and they're all doing it. It seems like that. I kind of kind of wish the, uh, the the Falcons would have reached a little harder, in my opinion, but. Yeah, that, that's what they're going for. It's obvious that they want that same kind of success that the other teams have had. And this is just the next guy up for that. Yeah, I like him. I, of course, it's tough to say, you know, prefer over Jim Harbaugh because Jim Harbaugh would have been the slam dunk hire of, this, of the decade. Um, and if... I, I, I think Jim Harbaugh said that if he, he would not take the Vikings job, he probably won't come back to the NFL at all. Um, which is unfortunate. We'd love to see him there, but... Um, I, I get why he makes just, just makes good money in college. Yeah. Much less pressure. Um, so if it's Kevin O'Connell, I like the hire. I think it's sort of a revolutionized um, approach to a, a franchise that's been stuck for a long time with the old ways of Mike Zimmer that have kind of gradually gotten worse and worse and more outdated. Not to say that he's a bad coach, but this is a 180 flip turnaround from uh, from what it was before and. Um, I don't like him as much as Mike McDaniel, which should be obvious to anyone who knows me at this point. <laughs> but um, I think he has good potential. And he also inherits a roster that is workable. So don't hate it. Would have loved Jim Harbaugh, of course. And then we have this, the uh, the Giants with uh, with Brian Dabble. So what do you think about this one? Yeah. This is the last one. I was in a big hurry to get to this one. Uh, the Bills. You know, a lot of people are saying that, that this guy is actually the success behind Josh Allen. And I don't know. I tend to think that Josh Allen is just that good, and I, I thought so when he was drafted. But um, the the Giants are hoping that he is the force behind Josh Allen because they have a similar quarterback that hasn't been tapped into yet. His potential has not been tapped into like it should have been, in my opinion. Uh, I think this could be a good hire if he can get this team. Like anywhere near where the Bills uh, are, or th then it's a great hire. I just uh, I don't have a lot of confidence with the pieces around Danny right now. So I, I hope it could work out. It really could. And for 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 Danny Dimes, that would be the the best thing ever. So hopefully it will. He's facing a tough challenge. Like he himself, he's stepping up in in rank. He's going from a play caller pretty much exclusively focusing on the offense to head coach which is very different uh, very different and harder challenge and also the environment around him has gotten significantly worse because uh, daniel jones is not josh allen he has potential but he's not josh allen mm -hmm. so um he does not have a quarterback that can bail him out for a bad play call like josh allen could and did by the way sometimes in some games um like against chiefs uh, that was very clearly Josh Allen. That was not genius play calling in the end. It was just Josh Allen 
and Gabriel Davis finding a way. Um, but that being said, of course, he is a, an integral part of the Bills' success and the, the offense becoming what it is, Josh Allen being developed. So he has done it. He has that on his record. Uh, this is a much different a much much different situation though with the Giants and if it's gonna be Daniel Jones for the foreseeable future I think it'll be one year for now and then see where it goes um, either this is the breakout year the year that Daniel Jones really proves himself or, or Brian Allen's gonna find his own guy uh, next year I think um, they're gonna st definitely stick with him just for the talent that he has for another year if it doesn't work out it's rebuild time and that's gonna be a big challenge uh, ahead of him. I believe he's capable of doing it. Not the most spectacular one after um, Mike McDaniel and Kevin O'Connell. This is not the most spectacular offensive quarterback or quarterback coordinator being hired, but um, it's, it's solid. It's nothing too flashy. It's someone we thought should get a job and he, he got a job which was sensible, um, but it, it'll be tough. It'll definitely be tough and uh, he, he probably has a lot of work to do, but uh, it's a soft division, so maybe, you know, mm -hmm. maybe if he gets a year or two, he can he can do something with that. I wouldn't mind it, because I want uh, Daniel Jones to succeed. Yeah, he's maybe not he's not the best in my opinion, but he's you know, it's not bad. So can't say can't say too much about it. Well, I can't say that D Danny's gonna be as good as Josh Allen, but I think he has the potential to reach that kind of level you know that, that he could be there under the right coach and i'm, I'm nah. pretty sure if if he was going to reach josh allen level that he would have showed more flashes than what he has but then again he's had some spectacular uh moments in his career so far uh, other than running faster than any quarterback has ever been clocked in the nfl and then falling maybe not his highest spot but before he fell on that run, that was his highest spot. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I like that. I like Danny, man. I think he could be really good. I ain't gonna say he's gonna be as good. Just somewhere in the ballpark. You see what I'm saying? Like, no, no, I don't see it honestly. Because Josh don't? Allen, uh -huh. no, because Josh Allen is like the most. I'm gonna say this about Aaron Rodgers every time, but if you constructed the perfect quarterback, just physically, it would be Josh Allen. Like in terms of just mm -hmm. his physical gifts, he's just the most talented quarterback oh, that's ever that's ever played. He has the highest ceiling of every any quarterback ever been in the NFL uh, at this moment. Um, I don't think Daniel Jones. He's not. He's not. He doesn't have the kind of arm. He doesn't have the kind of mobility. Um, well, I don't know. Now, if he's been clocked as the fastest quarterback ever clocked in the NFL, or it, was it just for that season, or or did they say it was ever? You remember when that happened, right? Yeah. Can't be ever. Cannot be ever. Yeah, so yeah, maybe like it Mike, was, Michael Vick and that. What was it, like 22 miles an hour or something ridiculous? Uh, oh, man, I'll have to bring that up. Was it the run Was it the run that he stumbled and yeah, fell over fell. before the end zone? Yeah. <laughs> Should have yeah, scored that, on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, see, that was his brightest moment and then his least brightest moment all in, in one play. play. <laughs> yeah. Which is a great way to describe his entire career so far. Yeah, it is. It it's, is. It's perfect. I don't think he's that. He's welcome to be honest. And I was very high on him when he got drafted. I got backlash. I got a lot of backlash because I was so high on Daniel Jones. He was my second quarterback that year. And everyone was throwing him down like, he's no good, coming out of Duke useless and when he got drafted high i said you know this makes sense i you know i was uh i was getting ridiculed for it of course i had drew lock as my number one and he went what 64th overall or something like that yeah um, and that was the kyler murray year uh but uh and, and the, <laughs> the will Gr the will greer year we don't talk about him <laughs> yeah he just ne never got a shot but I wanted him to the Patriots that year and end up with Mac Jones. But yeah, it would have been much better for him to tell you. Yeah, that. but yeah, I, I, think I pulled so. up. I pulled up the stat here. It was twenty one point two three miles per hour. It says Jones reached twenty one point two three miles per hour on his eighty yard run, which is faster than any quarterback, including Lamar Jackson, has reached since twenty eighteen. That is impressive. That is. It is certainly impressive. That, yeah. I will give you that. I, he's got the um, mobility, in my opinion. He he hasn't done it with the same frequency, right? Because it's it's also a mental part to it, um, having to process 
what's going on downfield and finding the escape, finding the running run. I think Josh Allen does it so efficiently and so uh, proficiently. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see Daniels like Daniels Jones has to show something to be able to com- compete with that because what Josh Allen's been doing this year uh, especially towards the end of the year and whenever he's playing at his best he's he looks like from a different planet like nothing we've ever seen um, mm-hmm. that we haven't seen from Daniel Jones so that's what gonna, what's going to have to happen and it's not that likely that it's going to happen now at this point I think he's still serviceable but I th- I still have him more like, you know, uh, he is the, the, the heir to Eli Manning, and he is kind of an Eli Manning to me. I think that's that's sort of what, he, what the he kind of player like he is. looks like him, at least. Yes, yeah, he does look like him. Probably talks <laughs> like him, too. I've never heard him, but, <laughs> but I just imagine that he speaks exactly like Eli Manning. Yeah, well, they both have kind of a bland, just general accent, so yeah, pretty close, yeah. Aw, shucks, gosh darn <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but maybe Brian Dabble can give him some stability at least, maybe. if nothing Would, else. Wouldn't mind it. Would not mind it. But uh, I, I, I'll step back on the Josh Allen comparisons. I don't think that's <laughs> that's in the cards at this point. But that is the show. We did the predictions, reviewed all the coaching hires so far. Mike McDaniel, phenomenal. Love what the Dolphins <laughs> are doing. I may not have may not have mentioned that enough uh, earlier on the show but let us know in the comments your prediction for the super bowl who do you have uh why there's also a whole laundry list of prop bets available if you care about um the length of the national anthem the result of the coin flip which is the worst bet in the world every (laughs) year i cannot believe that it exists you are you are getting 99% 99% odds on your money to pick a literal coin flip. Yeah, a 50-50. It's t- this is the worst thing I've ever experienced. I cannot believe um, the stupidity, the degree of stupidity for anyone who would bet on this. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. You, for every dollar you bet, you are throwing a cent in the trash, in the most literal sense possible. Yeah. Hate it, but it is what it is. It's, it's, it's funny to look at sometimes. So yeah, you could probably bet about just about everything that happens in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, so if you're, if you're interested in doing that, I'm gonna I'm gonna review a couple of them and see uh, see if there's anything fun. But mostly it's, mostly I like to stick to actual in-game events. So let yeah. us know your picks. Let us know your opinions on the um, the coaching hires if you have any specific ones. And um, we'll be back next week. Super Bowl review, uh, NFL honors review, which is happening just tonight. We did our predictions for that last week in case you still care about uh, listening to those. And then we are setting our sights on the draft and the USFL. Great to Mm -hmm. say that. Love love to say it. So thank you for watching, uh, sticking with us throughout the season. And we are going to see you in the next one. Deuces. Check, check the scoreboard. Check, check.